Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, my guest, this could be an interesting conversation. I'm, I've been looking forward to it. And my guest today is um, Courtney Diondi. And Courtney, first and foremost, thank you for taking time. You're a CPA, and, it's, and it's, it's, we're recording this in the first part of February. So thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend on my podcast. Oh, it's my pleasure, Peter. Thank you for having me. Um, so let's get right to it. First question I have for you, and we, we, we spent some time beforehand trying to talk and get to know each other, but what are the three questions successful business owners ask that unsuccessful ones don't? I'm really curious about this question. Okay, so one of the three questions is, how does my business really make money? The second one is, how does cash flow through my business. And the third one is what is the best way to leverage my time, talents, and unique abilities in this business? Interesting. Uh, so what do the unsuccessful ones do? I'm gonna come back to these three, but I'm curious what the unsuccessful ones, what question, so they don't ask this question, but what's that mindset? Yeah. So really the, on the first one, how does my business make money? Yeah. The, if you're not asking that question, you are assuming that what's in your head for your cost structure and your margins on your products and services are high, right? That they're good. <laughs> they're strong. They're what you have in your head, like what, mm -hmm. what they were maybe two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, and, and you've kind of, for most of the time, people have lost touch with the actual costs and profitability of their business, because as businesses grow and scale, you get more people, more processes, more activity involved that you're not directly involved with anymore. And so the mindset shift is, I can't keep all this in my head anymore. So I really mm -hmm. have to look at good information that tells me where my business is really making money and the product that I think is so profitable might not be as profitable as it once was or what I think it is. Completely understand it and and, and hit the cash flow one for me because I think it's an interesting one of a business owner trying to understand what their true cash flow position is just not I've got money in my checking account. Right. Yeah. So, and that's the perfect segue into like the mindset shift is like, so if you're thinking about how much money do I have, that's, that's what most people think about how much money do I have? Mm -hmm. And the shift is how much money is flowing in and out mm -hmm. over the coming weeks. And it's a shift to where am I from? Where am I today? It's a shift to what is flowing in and out over the next few weeks, continuously looking that, at that mm -hmm. as, as like a forecast or projection so that you can eliminate surprises because most financial surprises are not usually positive. <laughs> and so you're just trying to shift your mindset from looking at, well, what do I have today? Okay, looks good yeah. to what is flowing in and out over the next few weeks so that you can be prepared and, and take action if things don't look good a few weeks down the road, not just look at where you stand today. So does your firm focus on small or middle market types of companies? Yes, small, medium-sized, privately owned businesses. Okay, so in thinking about the small, medium-sized business, the CEO a lot of times doesn't have the financial acumen per se that maybe a CFO does. Right. So when you're having these conversations with your clients, do you ever get the deer in the headlights look from them because they, you know, or what's going, what, what's what's happening? I have no idea what what you're saying, and and get, this, you're smiling. So this, much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think that our approach is very educational. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. we we consider that our clients, for the most part, this isn't their this isn't their highest leverage use of their gifts and abilities. They are brilliant in other things, operations, sales, um, visioning, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's our job to help them understand 
at a high level, not at the level in which they need to do it themselves, but at a high level, why any of this matters. And so our approach is very much from an educational teaching standpoint to really empower our clients to understand and use the information and to take the insights and perspectives that we give them to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a mindset shift for a professional because a lot of times as financial professionals, CPAs, we, we think that we have to know all the technical answers and that's what kind of fills us up is like, oh, well, we know this stuff and, and we, we have all the answers and, mm -hmm. and we're so smart. It doesn't, nobody cares about all that technical stuff unless they understand why it matters to them. Mm -hmm. And so shifting that mindset, even for us as client service providers and professionals, that if this doesn't help them achieve what they're trying to achieve, they don't really care. So you better get into the position of like, why does this make any difference to them in their business? What's the value to them in this? I'm, I've got goosebumps. I, I, I seriously, I got, I, I, you said it, we have to become more educational and I'm going, I've been saying that for years. I mean, you, your, your approach is just spot on. Um, uh, what, what a financial professional should be providing to their clients decision-making, but if, if they can't understand us or we just hit them with all that technical knowledge, they just tune out. Yeah. But when, when we're there, teaching oh that's just brilliant but ha but having that mindset and it's it's one would think there'd be more of you out there but you guys are a rare breed because i interact with a lot of cpas and, and actually i stepped into a role of virtual cfo because i'm translating between a, a, a friend client of mine and their cpa firm and friend client brilliant at what she does but doesn't know accounting mm -hmm. they're brilliant knowing accounting but they can't put it in a language they can't teach in that same way so i, I stand up give you a big standing ovation for that approach is, is this something that the firm has always done or is this something recent yeah i say i mean we've we've always had some of that more um consultative type of approach, but definitely in the last five or so years, we as a firm, we implemented EOS as the framework for running our business, the entrepreneurial operating system, and is really in preparation for um, our managing partner, or I'm sorry, our founding partners retiring, and mm -hmm. really the next generation of leadership, myself and a couple of other younger partners, looking at, okay, who do we want to become? We know who we've been, we've been around our firm now today, we've been around for 46 years. So it's a lot of history, a lot of success, but that what we've done before isn't gonna necessarily be relevant or right. even what we want into the future. And so when we looked at our opportunities and um, how we wanted our firm to be the vision for our firm, that was one of the things that we really focused on is the difference that it makes when you fill the gap for small and medium-sized business owners, you fill the gap of knowledge and understanding. You take financial data and decision-making and insert analysis and perspective and relevancy. And most of our clients that we'd been serving, say maybe we're doing an annual audit, annual tax work, they didn't, they didn't have a CFO, they didn't have a controller, maybe they have a bookkeeper, maybe they were doing it themselves. And that was the gap that we saw that we could start to fill that by helping them get access to that kind of thinking, but, mm -hmm. but for, from like a fractional share, you know, you don't have to hire your own CFO, but you need somebody thinking about this stuff and working with you all throughout the year. And once we made that shift and started bringing in new clients under that model where we don't take anybody that's just looking for tax return prep, you know, mm -hmm. anymore, um, it was amazing to see that that's what business owners want. They just didn't, they just didn't know there was somebody out there that would do that. Right. And so it, it became um, a mindset shift for, for us around how do we approach when they come to us and say they're looking for a new CPA to do their tax return, that we don't just say, okay, we say, mm -hmm. 
tell me about your business. Tell me about your challenges. Tell me about what's holding you back. Tell me about all these problems. And then we share how we can help because they aren't coming in. Like to your point, there aren't a lot of other CPA firms out there doing this. So they aren't coming in expecting us to solve issues around processes and people and um, profitability and all that. Um, So yeah, lots of, lots of mindset shifts um, around that. Wow, that, that is awesome. And, and and the third one there, so we have make money, cash flow, and, and about the time tallies, I believe is what you... you yeah, so this is that. about like, what's the best, um, highest leverage use of your time and talents? So, because this is, I think, where, where we run into, especially uh, business owners that have been doing it themselves, have been doing the accounting or bookkeeping themselves, mm. is that they think they can't afford to hire an accountant or a professional Mm. or or even if they've already got a a bookkeeper they don't think they can afford a cfo um and so they're so they're doing some of these things themselves or it's not happening right and you really need to think about what is it costing your business for you to do it because your business is paying for it to be done it's just paying you to do it Mm -hmm. and if you could make more sales or innovate and create new products or recruit more people or whatever else it is that's your gift, that would make your business so much more money. And you would also then have good information, make decisions and know how you make your money and forecast your cash flow and all that stuff. So it's really about understanding what is your way that you uniquely contribute to your business. And most of the time, it's not going to be in finance and accounting and a lot of the time it's it's not going to be where you're spending most of your time and then you have to get into some of the other you know operational changes of delegation and and process improvement and you know can go on and on from there wow that's people ask me um so do you since you're a cpa don't you do your own books no and they go, what do you mean? No, I said, no, I don't, I don't do the technical side. I don't do the technical accounting. That I'd rather pay 10% of my business to have a, a, hire an accounting firm to do that for me because my job as an entrepreneur is to find new opportunities and take care of my existing clients. That's my responsibility and, and, and create a culture, not sit there and try to save 15, 20, 100, 200, 300 dollars by doing my own accounting. Uh, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, I know how to do it, but that doesn't make me money. How do I, how can I generate more revenue? And that was the mindset I had immediately when I started my business 11, 12 years, 12 years ago. Uh, but I, I, I can't believe there's people out there who want to do both. But I, I but I also think it's that mind, you know, when you, I ask people, if you could go back then from what you know now, what would you do differently? And in some degree, they say that. Uh, it's like, you know, I probably held on to things too closely. Uh, I, I should have let things go. Um, so it, this, this, has been, this has been fascinating. And um, there is, an, the, on, your, on your one sheet that you sent, there is this one question that also I was very interested in asking you. And it's, why don't you need to have the best product on the market to become hugely profitable? I went, what? Mm. (laughs) yeah so the answer is because your product needs to be profitable it doesn't have to be the best Mm, so a lot of times people focus on i have to have the best service or product and they a lot of times won't even launch anything until they feel like they've got it the best. Mm -hmm. And really what you need to be focused on is the mix of something that you can do profitably and something that people need and want, Mm -hmm. right? So understanding your customers and your clients, their needs and their wants and creating a solution for their problem and being able to to deliver it in a profitable way. It doesn't have to be the best at delivering it. It has to be profitable. And once you get something out there, you can tweak it and improve it and make it better and better and better. But if you never get it out there or you have it out there and it's not profitable, then you're not winning. And some people don't even have the information to answer that question of, is this profitable? The yeah, assumption I, I, is that it is, but it, they a lot of times don't have the information to actually know that. 
why do I need information? It's all in my head. <laughs> but I, I think I, you know, I, I think it, 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 as we uh, we'll be getting close to wrapping up here in a few minutes. Uh, but I, I think what what it goes to the point that they don't really understand the cost structure of their products and services. Yes. And yep. and and and, and, they're, and how do they constitute time? I remember somebody asked me for uh, a bid to do like a one hour presentation, and I gave them a number. And said, do you want that for one hour? I'm like, no, no, no. I want that for one hour plus the 30 years behind me and the work and stuff to get me to this point. But a lot of times we just give it away. Mm -hmm. and, and and why do we do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's I agree. I think it's a it's just a lack of clarity around what all goes into the cost of this mm -hmm. and what is the value. So the cost, you know, that's your floor. What's the right. value to the to the person receiving it? You know, that doesn't have to be um, right down there with your cost. That that can be, you know, even more margin above it. But a lot of times, like you said, people just don't have an accurate um, information in their head. So, or they're they're not thinking about all the indirect overhead costs of running their business that have to be covered right. through these products. And and that's not because um, you know, they're idiots, it's because no one's helping them understand how all of this information flows into this. So pricing is a, a big, you know, part of how we help clients with recognizing that because it's getting information around margin. So yeah, it doesn't have to be the best, yeah. but it needs to be profitable. So I, I assume you've heard this from some of your clients, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put a bid on, I'm trying to get some new business, I got a prospect, so I'm gonna lowball my bid so I get my foot in the door. Yeah, you're smiling again. <laughs> so, so what's your response back to them when, when they said that to you? Well, you don't want to lose money on it, right? And right. so there, I think there's definitely certain times where it might make sense to lower your margin on a particular bid in order to, because of the future opportunities that can come mm -hmm. from it. But it's a very slippery slope. And especially when it's competitive, you're essentially just hurting everybody and bringing all of you down. And so, but I, but I think um, the main thing we talk about is really knowing what is your true margin? Because a lot of times mm -hmm. when you think you're discounting it, you could be eating, you, if your margin's inflated from the beginning, you think you're mm -hmm. making more off of it than you really are. Um, you're gonna end up essentially paying to do the mm -hmm. job instead of getting paid to do it. Right. And, and, and I, you know, when I first started my business, I was suspect to that. It's like, wait, if I lowball, then when I get in and I do the job and they say, we want you back and do this. And I give my normal price. We're like, what the heck is that? I thought what you gave me was your best price. Uh -huh. And it, it, it creates this somewhat of an uncomfortable level with the client or potential client. If you just come in and ask that price. That, that you know that you can be profitable at and be able to validate it through your conversation. And if they don't want to take it, that, that's fine. There's a lot of business out there. Yeah. Well, and what we found and what we've helped coach our clients on is that if the price is a very sensitive issue, then perhaps you need to give them a couple of options. And so you've got the option that of everything that they ask for that's higher than they want to pay. Mm -hmm. And then strip down the scope of what you're going to do for them to match their budget so that they mm -hmm. can decide okay, if this is my budget, this is what I get. Mm -hmm. If this is really what I want, this is what it's going to take. And it gives them, instead of a decision of yes or no, it gives them the opportunity and kind of the agency to decide what do I want? So it doesn't have to be just one, one option. I mean, we always give three um, and mm -hmm. encourage our clients to think about it from that perspective of, and if you're going to, if you're going to change your price, you're going to discount it tie it to some change in scope, not just, mm -hmm. oh, you don't want to pay that much. Okay, I'll charge you less. Right, I exactly. Well, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this has been very eye-opening for myself. I, I, how can people find you first? Yes, so they can find us at TDTPC dot com um, that that's our website i'm also on linkedin at courtney durandi d-e-r-o-n-d-e -E. i do a video post every week um, so i'm pretty active on there and would love to connect with people on linkedin or you can reach out directly through our website at tdtpc.com 
I, I, you guys have figured out the secret sauce. Uh, I, I applaud your firm. I, 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 I'm looking forward to following, following you on LinkedIn and learning more about, and hopefully someday a paths will cross because I could sit down and talk to you for a couple hours and just be fascinated. So thank you very much for your time and um, stay warm. It's February and it's, you're in Iowa. I mean, it's, yes. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Thanks so much for having me on.